Foot Clan, stay tuned. Today's show's got it all. We got some buy or sell. We got some news, some mailbag, and the Thursday night preview. Cam Newton, Jameis Winston, what are we going to get? Uh, find out. Hey, Foot Clan, today's show is brought to you by our friends at pristineauction.com. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. You can get some deals, some steals on your favorite player. All of the autographs are authentic. They are JSA certified. You can browse them each and every day. And the cool thing is, is these are daily auctions. So you have a turnover of new players, new teams, new auctions each and every day. All you got to do is go to pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS when you sign up, and you'll get $5 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. Check it all out at pristineauction.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. We're excited to be with you. We have some buy or sell on the show today, some news to break down, my goodness, some mailbag, the Thursday night preview. Jason is with us again. Now, fair warning, he will speak into your soul. I will see and, you. And reveal all of your secrets before your eyes. Where you're listening. I see you right now. But he is here. Uh, we've we've made some efforts with the technology available to us to um, to keep you with us for the duration of the show, to let you speak at a lower volume um, because you are encumbered by illness. Yes, but I can speak directly to the soul. Correct, which is helpful. And if you could use that power to speak against some of these waiver wire opponents that I have, I think I could really get a leg up. I am your waiver wire opponent. <laughs> well, that's troubling. <laughs> that's it's troubling on many levels. But uh, Mike. Hello. Mike is present with us. And accounted for. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Andy Holloway. You can find us each on Twitter at JasonFFL, at FFHitman for Mike, at Andy Holloway for yours truly. And then at the FF Ballers is the show. There are three days left to win a signed Alvin Kamara jersey. You can do that at FootClanGiveaway.com. Uh, he looked so good this week. Oh, uh, man. Just such a good player. And uh, that offense is going to run through him, and I love it. What else do we got going on? A little drop it like it's hot reminder this yes. morning? Mm. Yes, please do. I was getting blown up in the mentions, people. The, the overreaction to week one, it's real. It happens every single year. Players I have heard are on waiver wires. O.J. Howard, Miles Sanders. We like we're talking big time players. David Montgomery have been dropped. Yes, so. I heard. I even heard a rumor about a guy who turned down a trade. They they were sending Sony Michelle, Stephon Diggs, and who was the other player in that? Devin Singletary and Devin Singletary all for Sammy Watkins, the Lizard King. And they were thinking about turning that down. That's that's how crazy and the week I one tilt is. And I with them. That's insane, Mike. It's not. It's like so. It, if you're the one who brought it up, so let's get into it. Sammy Watkins, because like I guess we can jump ahead to the the news a little bit because the Tyreek Hill update is he's going to be out four to six weeks. He may be out longer than six weeks. Like four would be the soonest he would be able to come back. Let's pretend he is. Let's pretend pretend he's out for the remainder of the season. Okay. Oh. Okay, then he's Sammy gone Watkins. for the season. I would still rather have Sony Michelle, Stephon Diggs, and Devin Singletary on my roster than I would Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins, if Ty while Tyreek is out, Sammy Watkins is locked into being a top ten wide receiver and has top three up upside on a weekly basis. Now, locking him in, you are also locking in the built-in risks associated with Sammy Watkins. We have a career, sure. a five-year six going on six-year span of risk with Sammy Watkins. You are, uh, to me, and this is just, we're debating it. You brought it up. I brought it up. We're talking through it. it. It is reading far too much into week one of the season. His production, the lack of touchdowns on the ground, all of these things. Watkins is going to be great he's if be he's great. healthy. Sure. 
And if he's on the field, and if he, but he's not going to put up 198 and two. No, oh, no. And look who had struggled. Stephon Diggs struggled week one. They threw ten passes. Also, Sony gets hurt Michelle a lot. struggled week one. Also gets hurt a lot. And then Devin Singletary, who who Isn't had a great week one. Yeah. Two of them are running backs. I care a lot more about that for my team than I do picking up the wide receiver that might have uh, Tyreek Hill coming back. Let's put up a poll question. Well, yeah, you, that's you great. also have to consider who you have, you have to, to drop. drop. Yes. Because you can always make a trade sound good by having a two or three for one, but the reality is they're always three for three or two for two because you have to drop people. Sure, sure, and that's fair. And uh, that'll be subjective team by team depending on whether you have those guys to drop or not. But uh, I'm just shocked at the thought of of not cashing in on that Sammy Watkins value while you have it when you get an offer that big, that – uh, but the Lizard the, King but is powerful. The point here is he it, reigns a kingdom. He, he reigns for weeks at a, <laughs> uh, a week at a time. Very often, it's very rare that his his reign is a very long and peaceful reign. It is a lot of it's, it's tumultuous. It's very tumultuous, and we don't. I just don't want to lose sight of the realities of these situations. <laughs> Sony Michelle has Miami this week. If Sony Michelle, and I'm not joking here, if he scores four times. Like, that's in the realm of possibility for it's, Sonny Michel this week against is. Miami. It certainly is. And also then, in the realm of possibilities is they blow out Miami and Sonny Michel and gets, Burn- gets 14 touches sure. and does nothing. Sure. Uh, let's put a poll question up at the FF Ballers. See which side you'd land on. See if the Lizard King has ruled your brains and minds as well, and you side with Mike. I, I just love this because early in the off season, <clears throat> early in the off season, I was arguing when it looked like Tyreek Hill was gone that Sammy Watkins was locked as a top 15 wide receiver, and I could get no support whatsoever. What? I was in on that. Well, at least from this side. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at my rankings and if you look at my history talking about Sammy Watkins, there have never been one time that I've said Sammy Watkins cannot be productive. What I have said is that the volatility of Sammy Watkins is something I have chosen to remove from my team. And in week one, that choice sucks. You put your hand in the fire. Yeah. And, but over the duration of his six-year career, it has been the wise choice to not have him. Whether this year is different or not is yet to be determined. So the victory lapse can come week five or six if you've got this player over these first five weeks. There is no argument how good he looked in week one. You want to add to that list of players that look great on film? Sure. Post after the catch, Sammy Watkins in week one, it was like a Madden joystick. It was impressive. It, it was, was unbelievable. Like a lizard. It was like a lizard. It all comes back to that. It is Wednesday. Before we get into the news, let's do some buy-sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, week two edition. These are some bounce-back buy or sell questions for you. Mike, Nick Chubb. 100 rushing yards against the Jets this week. Are you buying? Are you selling? Mm. He was 17 for 75 in week one. It didn't feel like that. No, it did not. Uh, but I am going to sell it myself. What do you think? Uh, man, 100, 100 is a lot of rushing yards. And the, the Jets, we saw You know, Josh Allen got his. Devin Singletary ripped off a couple uh, decent plays. It certainly can happen, but I'm going to sell. I'm going to sell if it's 100 rushing yards. If you give me like 100 total yards, I I might be in on that. But um, I'm going to sell. Selling as well. O.J. Howard, ten, oh. 10 fantasy points on Thursday night. 10 fantasy points for O.J. Howard. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it too. I think, like I said, it was it was wild to me that people are dropping O.J. Howard at the at, already. I will, I will uh, bring this forward to you. O.J. Howard, a lot of people drafted him. I mean, he was obviously drafted, yes. so you've got him on your roster. fourth round pick. Then there's going to be the waiver wire reaction. There's going to be T.J. Hawkinson. There's going to be Mark Andrews. There's going to be Darren Waller. Waller. Darren Waller. I believe that the majority of leagues people are going to be put in a position where they're saying, hey, I'm going to start those three guys that had the big week one. They're going to chase the points. Would you start those three players in week two over O.J. Howard? That I I am facing that decision. In my money league, I have I paid up for O.J. Howard in that league. I drafted him very high, and I was the one who I, – I got T.J. Hawkinson on my team, so I have to make that decision. I would play O.J. Howard over Hawkinson. Yeah, I, I lean that way, but we'll, we'll let the, the rankings – So you're buying 10 fantasy points. I am. 
Jason, yep. are you buying? I am buying as well. He still had uh, three more routes run than Cameron Brait. Cameron Brait had two touchdowns that were both called back on penalty. Howard had a bad fumble, a bad drop. Here's a situation that I am one of the highest concern situations that yeah. I have. Devonta Freeman in week one, eight for 19 on the ground, three for 12 through the air. The offensive line looks like it's a, a problem, which is a similar issue for Nick Chubb in week one. But the game script was was nasty. Minnesota controlled the whole game. Uh, Devonta Freeman had a fumble. Do you buy or sell 90 total yards against Philadelphia? I have to sell that. Yeah, I have to sell as well. Chris Lindstrom, their, their rookie guard who they were going to be counting on a lot, he has been placed on IR with a foot injury, so the the offensive line has gotten even worse. It's a bad start here for Devonta Freeman, but I I honestly do believe better days are ahead, but week two is, is going to be rough as well. He split the snaps 50-50 with Ito Smith, exactly. And Devonta Freeman is – so Brooks brought this to me this morning and wanted me to vet these, and the original line here was – 100 total yards and I was like dude yeah that's that not even close I was like move it to 90 maybe they'll be in I wouldn't for but example maybe they will Duke and you Johnson, guys are both super out at 90 total yards yeah we are I mean Duke Johnson this last week had 90 total yards so if you, that game 33 through the air 57 on the ground can Devonta Freeman do that against Philly of course but the game script needs to they need to be able to stop Carson Wentz I'm not sure that that's going to happen this week and it after Freeman fumbled it did seem like he got a little of the uh, oh he did the football justice of we're gonna put Edo Smith in. Yep, Aaron Rodgers as a top ten quarterback versus Minnesota this week. Do you buy or sell Aaron Rodgers? Sell. Wow, I sell. This sell, is a sell. sad buy or sell. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, it's sell. supposed to be a bounce back buy or sell, but nobody's predicting bounce backs. I'm going to sell. Gross, gross. It, it's not the best matchup. Minnesota's defense is great. I'm buying. And Aaron okay. Rodgers has not There we looked. go. Some I am, hope. I am absolutely buying this. No doubt about so, it. So QB 9, QB no. 10? At home, at Lambeau, Aaron Rodgers, week two, under the floor. Uh, look, it's a better it, – it sounds crazy. It's a lot better matchup than Chicago. Sure. So I'm going to buy it. All right. Cam Newton, top 10 quarterback against Tampa Bay this week. To me, that's a tight one. I'm putting this one on layaway. Can you don't I, want to decide? I, can I do that? <laughs> like, I think I'm buying it, but I need I need some time. I need another paycheck to be able to to invest on this purchase. Primetime Cam Newton, I'll buy it. He but, looked bad. Yeah, like, well, he didn't run. And well, yes. fantasy-wise, you're going to have a problem he with did, him. He, he did not run, and he was not throwing the ball down the field. I mean, those are the two huge red flags. Do, do, you, do you ever notice that he – if he threw a tomahawk, it would look identical to how he throws a football. It, <laughs> yeah. It's a very interesting throwing motion, yes. It, 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 sometimes when he's on that back foot and he tomahawks that ball, you're just like, when you complete the pass, you forget about the throwing motion completely. Right. But when he doesn't, you're like, you've, you're you doing things wrong, Cam. The thing is, is his entire career, Cam, has looked like this. He has <laughs> terrible it's, games yeah. that you'd go, oh, he just he stinks. He's not a good quarterback. And then he comes out and is the number one quarterback in fantasy. Yeah, his his huge year, if I recall correctly off the top of my head, his monster year, you know, three or four years ago. Week one was bad, and I believe I dropped Cam, and then you picked him up, Jason, yeah, and rode him to a title. I did. That's why I can't – I'm not just outright selling this even though he, he looked really, really bad week According one. According to my rankings, I've got Cam at nine, Aaron Rodgers at 11, so I am buying Cam. Okay. Um, last season when Cam Newton had a bad game, so he finished outside the top 12, uh, he followed it up with a number seven, a number nine, a number four, all top 10. So uh, he needs to run. If Cam Newton's not going to run, then he's not even close to the same fantasy quarterback. 100% that's the issue. And if his foot is not okay, and that's the reason he wasn't running, then there are giant red flags. Uh, yeah, I think I said ankle on the show yesterday. I want to be clear. It's a below-the-shin injury. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> all right, that was Buy or Sell uh, from Pristine Auction. Again, I said it at the top. Check them out, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up. Get five bucks towards uh, your favorite autograph sports memorabilia. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into the news. 
news and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I tweeted last night. I said, cool. Yeah. Cool. We get to talk about Antonio Brown. Cool. Give me a shot of Hennigan's. My voice uh, just went out. <laughs> You're a lucky man. Antonio Brown has been accused of sexual assault stemming from three different incidents in 2017 and 2018. This is a family-friendly show, and the reports, the accusations are not family-friendly. No. The accusations are severe. The NFL, uh, the leaders of the NFL, is the way this quote is written, uh, which makes it sound more like a cult. But the leaders of the NFL, they're meeting about the Antonio Brown situation today. The exemplist is a possibility if the league has to focus on this investigation. It's not clear whether a decision on that will be made before the Patriots game Sunday. We already had Bill Belichick coming out and saying that Brown wasn't even a guarantee to play on Sunday. The Patriots released a statement of their own saying they're aware of the allegation and the league has informed them that they will be investigating. Depending on what they internally believe about the situation will affect whether they cut ties with Antonio Brown now or in the near future. As of right now, there is a holding pattern and we don't know a lot of information we don't know the truth from the lie yeah but fantasy wise caution i, I like, mean uh, my my official statement people may not like it but is i have literally no advice on this we we have the same information that you have it's bad it's gross and it sucks but i have i have nothing i have i have no advice to give one way or the other and if Antonio you learned Brown. anything about the tyreek hill situation is that that same truth, that same statement, pretty much applied there, where you have uh, a mixture of governing bodies and authorities and individuals that have conflicting reports. Obviously, Antonio Brown has claimed his complete innocence. Uh, his accuser has, has claimed his complete guilt. This is the law. We are a fantasy show. You know, I don't have anything to recommend to you other than, you know, I was probably going to recommend caution with Antonio Brown this weekend anyways because they don't need him to beat Miami the biggest question is do people drop him you know waivers went yesterday is he a guy that you go you know what I want to take a shot at a Marquise Brown or you know whoever is he a worthy drop candidate or do you hold uh, obviously Tyreek Hill for a while seemed like a drop candidate or a you couldn't trade him for anything and then if you held on, it was worth it for fantasy. It's it that's the difficult decision people are faced with right now. If he is released, it will be a good decision to have dropped him. If he is exonerated, it will be a bad one. Like I said, I have no advice. Yeah, the only advice is if you don't want to deal with it, drop him. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, or or try to trade him or whatever. So I will say he this. will be at practice today, according to Bill Belichick. So the team is clearly waiting for the chips to fall. I will say this. If you drop Antonio Brown and move on, it is not a net loss if he comes back. You are acquiring another your player. team in the meantime. You know, I saw people drop Tevin Coleman. He's injured, and right. that's, that's, that's rough. But at the same time, I kind of applaud that. It's move on. It's help my team. Make the roster moves I need to do to win now, get in the playoffs, help win a championship. You know, I, I have a really, really hard time with my roster right now with Royce Freeman. Because I don't want this dude. <laughs> you know, he's a roster clog. And I'm sitting here thinking, do I drop him and move on and just help my team? Probably. Yeah, but, but then it's you, like he's a starting running. But if you saw him on the waiver wire, you go, hmm, that's interesting. That's, I should yes. probably pick him so up. So it's just a philosophical. <laughs> this is the best point that you've made in that deep voice so far. Uh, yes. This is, this is so important because – what your team needs depend. That's what affects the actual final decision. We cannot globally say go drop Tevin Coleman. I think in most leagues you shouldn't. That's my own opinion. Really, in most leagues okay. you shouldn't. Uh, if you don't have an IR spot, you might want to. And I say in most leagues you shouldn't because if your team has enough depth, look, he's going to come back and be a very involved player in the offense. But if you cannot afford to wait. If your team needs something off the waiver wire today, then he's a complete cut. So the, the, the answer is both directions, and you have to look at your roster. I mean, you know, do you, do you drop Tevin Coleman to pick up Ronald Jones? Mm. Do you do that, Mike? I would not do that, Mike. Yeah, I, w I don't think I'd do that. And Ronald Jones in a lot of, you know, depending on who you are, 
Is, uh, Malcolm Brown? Do you drop him to pick up Malcolm Brown? I don't. Yeah. I don't, yes. I would. I would rather have Malcolm Brown sitting on my bench for the. I, I. I don't think Malcolm Brown is really playable. I think he got. It was just a fortunate game script for him that he got the two touchdowns. But I would rather have the handcuff of Malcolm Brown, what he would become if Todd Gurley is forced to miss time, as opposed to a guy who is missing time right now. And I'm probably on the other side of that. Because sure. if, you, if you're signing a guy to play, that's a different story than signing a guy to wait. Right. But if, if your team needed tight end help and you could drop yep. him and pick up a TJ Hawkins oh, yeah, or shot at those, yeah. then you do it. All right. This is unfortunate. Jets Super wide receiver sad. Quincy Anunwa done for the season with a neck injury. Yesterday on the show, you know, part of the – the crux of the, the Crowder pickup in waivers was the health of Quincy Anunwa because him going out with injury, you don't want to read into, you know, 17 targets will not be a weekly occurrence for Jamison Crowder, but his stability seems to be, you know, enforced there. I mean, Robbie Anderson historically has not been a high pass volume player and Jamison Crowder is a quarterback's best friend, especially a young one. So I can tell you that when this news broke, in leagues that I did have bids in on Jamison Crowder, I I ticked him you up. Pulled a, him? I ticked him up a few dollars. Oh, even with the the addition because they lost. What do you mean the adi the addition of Demarius Thomas? Yeah, the Jets. Oh no, that doesn't affect me at all. Okay, no. Which it, that, does that was it affect part of the you? News. No, I just was. I'm just asking the question. But part of the news, Quincy Nunwa is out for the season with the neck injury, and they acquired Demarius Thomas from the Patriots. Now we don't know what Demarius Thomas has left. He's on. But his fourth team now in a calendar year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is – I brought it up. It's like Brandon Marshall's end of his career. Demaryius Thomas is not going to walk in off this transaction, off the Achilles, and do much to affect this lineup. You're, Jameson Crowder seems very safe for a significant amount of weekly targets. In a PPR league, yes. I would be spending 10 to 12 fab on Jameson Crowder. Here's what we know about the Patriots. They didn't just make a big mistake. You know what I mean? They didn't let him go for a six-round pick, and they're going to have massive regrets Did, because he's going to – Demarius? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, so. you just yeah, you just yelled at the Raiders. <laughs> Can you please yell at <laughs> yeah. the Jets? This is such manipulation by Bill Belichick. He didn't make the roster, people. Demarius Thomas did not make the Patriots roster. He was re-signed to be traded for a six-round pick, and it worked. Adam Gaze got a phone call from Bill Belichick, and he said, look, you want this Demarius Thomas guy? You you were once the offensive coordinator of him. Wouldn't that be really cool if you could just resurrect his career, Adam? And then Adam I thought think that factored in. Of course it did, because and he manipulated the, he manipulated the ego of Adam Gaze. And then you hear Bill at the end of the conversation, which is the <laughs> yeah, just a little <laughs> Palpatine <laughs> laugh. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Tyreek Hill clavicle injury sideline four to six weeks. Uh, the Chiefs' plan right now is to carry him on the active roster, not put him on IRR. The four to six is a real estimate. We yes. don't know if it's going to take longer. I talked it, yesterday. I'm really big on Nicole Hardman. Uh, I what, think that. What about a, Robinson? Well, I, I, in deep leagues, maybe, but snap count wise, even in this game, Nicole Hardman outpaced Demarcus Robinson, which okay. to me tells me the team really believes in Nicole Hardman. I'm not reading into the. I'm reading into the snap count, not the involvement in week one. For a rookie? Sure. You saw him in the preseason. He looked great. I really like him. Bruce Arians said Peyton Barber is going to remain the team's starting running back. I don't care. If I'm going to roster one, I'm going to roster Ronald Jones. Jason, what do you think? If I was going to roster one, I would rather be dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jason. I think there's a lot of up upside for if, Ronald Jones. If I had to roster one, it would be Dare uh, because he's the pass-catching back. And I mm -hmm. expect them to be down and throwing the ball a lot. I, I'm not interested. It would probably go Dare, Ronald Jones, Peyton Barber. Okay. I think, I think there's a lot of upside to Jones myself. He had a really good week. He should get the majority of the work if he continues. But Mike, it wasn't good enough to be called the starting running back. Well, sure. Sure. Because, you know, Chris Johnson was the starting running back for two years under Bruce Arians That's with David Johnson behind him. Wink, wink, start, start. You, the better player to have was David Johnson. But. Only because Chris Johnson got hurt, and then Andre Ellington got hurt. That's that's been my my uh, soliloquy against Ronald Jones the entire time. Is Ron's, if you don't do the things that Bruce Arians wants you to do, other players will still play ahead of you, even yeah. if you look like you're the best running back on the team. All right, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get it. 
Get it or else you're going to miss stuff. I mean, the news breaking. I mean, what would your life be like if you missed yeah. an Antonio Brown sleeper alert? Yep. Speaking of getting it, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank today's sponsor, FanDuel Ballers. Now is your chance to ball out. We're teaming up with FanDuel to bring you the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. Pick your best lineup. Face off against other listeners, and you can win cash prizes each week. There are 15 chances to win with over $30,000 in prizes. If you win any of the weeks, you'll qualify for the Week 16 Championship. The lucky winner is going to receive an all-expenses-paid trip to AZ, to the studio. You're going to hang out with us, and you're going to watch us record a podcast. The, the, the competition was fast. It was furious in Week 1. Congratulations to all the people who took down some prizes over there, and there's only limited space. So if you want in, you got to get in now. Each week, we'll tell you who our picks are. On Fridays, we're going to give you some insider information, help you build those lineups. Hurry up, get those lineups set for your chance to win the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series and hang out with us in Arizona. Join at FanDuel.com slash Ballers to enter. That's FanDuel.com slash Ballers. We also want to thank White Castle for sponsoring today's yes, show. Yes, we do. There's a reason they made a movie about two men defying great odds to get some White <laughs> Castle <laughs> sliders. Delicious. They are crave-worthy. Um, I trust that Jason would not even be able to be in the office without the medicating power of some sliders. Mm. And those uh, you can make them at home with the White Castle microwavable sliders. Uh, the sliders from the grocery store have the same one-of-a-kind taste that White Castle has been serving in their restaurants for years, including those unique signature buns, Jason, <laughs> to their 100% beef patties. Uh, they're cooked on a bed of steamed grilled onions, and these sliders come in a variety of flavors that make them enjoyable. Oh, so very enjoyable. Uh, we love them. From the castle or the grocery store, you can satisfy your craving anytime with White Castle. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get $1 off your purchase of any four- or six-pack White Castle sliders. Now, we are going to get into the mailbag and then the Thursday night preview, in that order, by the way. But our waivers just ran. Oh. And, and I want to let people know who was dropped. And I want to let people know what was paid for. Not that our know. not that our league of record is a you know perfect example of everything, but TJ Hawkinson, thirty five dollars. Somebody spent thirty five. Very interesting. And how much did how much did Darren Waller go for? Uh, that's a joke because you have him on your team. That's right, baby, the Walrus. Let's go. <laughs> Very nice, Mike. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Dak Prescott. Someone spent thirty one dollars on him. Thirty one dollars. I quarterback. I yeah. I had an eleven dollar bid on Dak. I don't blame people for spending that much on him. James Winston got the boot in that situation. Terry McLaurin, fourteen dollars. Dante Pettis dropped. Yeah, that was by Jason. That was by yours truly. Well, you you put your money where your mouth was literally here because you said yesterday McLaurin was one of the players you were most excited about on the waiver wire. Yes, I think Terry McLaurin is a very talented player. I went back, watched every route he ran. He looked great. And they're going to need him. He's the number one for the team right now, and I expect that they're going to need to throw the ball so, a lot. They ran almost exclusively three wide receivers at a time. He was on the field 93% of the time. So My, my concern, which let me ask you about this, Case Keenum. I know week one was great for him, but we also saw – him, we saw McLaurin streaking down the field wide open, mm -hmm. and then the classic Keenum missing him by a country mile. Sure, like he connected on the one. So what? But do you? So you're not concerned about not, Case not, Keenum? Not at all. I'm more okay. concerned about Dwayne Haskins taking over, just because a rookie will throw less. Um, I mean, I'm, how I'm was concerned a, about all of them. How was Emmanuel sure. Sanders last year? You know, before the injury is fantastic. Now, I'm, I'm, not saying, point. I'm not saying that Terry McLaurin is Emmanuel Sanders. I'm also not saying no, Case that Keenum a, with, with, Case with Keenum, Manny Sanders was great last yeah, year. I mean, yeah, Case yeah, Keenum there's supported a Emmanuel Sanders just fine. Significant pedigree difference there. I, there's I would, also, you there's can also look a the, significant difference between – I'm not saying that Terry McLaurin as a wide receiver won the way that Emmanuel Sanders was. Sure, sure. But, I mean, you look at it. It's difficult to ascertain the, the upside for me personally because you see situations like Miami – Different talented receivers. Being the number one wide receiver in Miami doesn't matter. One, two, three. It didn't matter last year. There are teams where it doesn't matter. You know, it's sure. really difficult. But as a rookie, there's upside. There's it, mystery. It's taking a shot at a guy that could be special. Right. 
Uh, it's interesting that Marquise Brown, 25 buckaroos. Man, this is so fantastic. Teams are spinning up. You know, that was the team that lost Tyreek Hill. So, uh, well, and, you know, and then I, I had actually bid $10 on Jameson Crowder for my team, and he went for 11 So I Oh, not, that's I rough. Got, I got nobody. That's rough. Which is, which is all right. I can wait for. I week like two. seeing that uh, there's a team that bid eleven dollars on Terry McLaurin, and they lost him to me. What do you see that team? Who who's that team? Andy? Was that Mike? It was Mike. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, all right. Mister Darren Waller. <laughs> all right, let's get into the mailbag. 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 Yeah. And well, just just so you know, Jay, I, I didn't get him because I got John Ross. So you, I, so you actually did spend more on John Ross than I, I spent on McLaurin. I did. I came in this morning. I was talking to Brooks. I'm kind of believing in John Ross. I, 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 we, when you missed the show, you know, we were talking about John Ross had this huge, huge game. I said I'm real excited. I want to go back and watch. I, that was the first thing I did after the show, and I'm like, dude, Andy, I am all in on John Ross. And then Andy watched, and Andy's like. Dude, he's I think I'm in on John Ross, too. He's literally the fastest guy in NFL history as far as combine goes. He's now got a coach that, I mean. I'm not. I'll take, I'm saying I'm for not the really, rental. I said it on the show yesterday. The one-week rental, you want to play him for a week or two? Sure. But he's got, like, the Bills and Steelers coming up after this week, and then A.J. Green's back, and I don't want the third wide receiver in Cincinnati. Sure. I, I guess the point that I was talking to Brooks about this morning was Zach Taylor's coming from the Sean McVay system that's 11 personnel all the time. It's three wide receivers. It supports those three. So if if Tyler Boyd and John Ross and A.J. Green just are always on the field running the same system, maybe it could work out. All right, let's go to the voicemail question first. If you have a question, you go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button, or dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. All right, we got an Alshon question. Hey, guys, love the show. Um, like Andy, last week I had Deshaun Jackson on my bench, unfortunately, and I was wondering because I also actually have Alshon Jeffrey on my team, so I was wondering if you all think I should play both of them this week because I could play DJX in my flex. Thanks. I don't think it's the end of the world in the right matchup to play both players. I agree. And if I had to choose one, I said it earlier this week, I would choose Deshaun Jackson because I think he, he was heavily involved and he offers you more big play uh, week winning performances. But he if does. You, if you like Alshon, I mean, Alshon probably is higher odds to end up in the end zone. I will say the, the, the one point of pause was they were down seven points if I'm re remembering the the score accurately like that call th that's going to cause much more involvement from the passing game so that that would be my one point of hesitation is I don't expect the Eagles to be trailing by three scores frequently you also didn't have a lot of involvement from Zach Ertz which is going to not be the that's a the routine Ert oh I think Ertz is in, I think there's trouble sometimes ahead for people who paid up for Ertz Ertz is a great player. Well, let's let's keep the uh, my. I'm saying sure. in proportion to the, looking at the, both wide receivers. Do you think Ertz is the third option on the team? I don't know. Okay, I like what happened. Look, Ertz was great last year because he's he, he is a great player, but he was a target machine. You also saw when they traded for Golden Tate, Zach Ertz's target share went way down. So that's that's been the concern of the addition of all the weapons for the Eagles. All right, uh, going to Twitter, Adam Brumberg. Waller or Andrews, rest of season? Mm. Make your declaration after one week. Rest of season, Waller or Andrews? Give me Andrews. I'll take Waller. Ah, man, this is so tough for me. I think I've got to take the guy who was on the field for every single snap. I, th I believe Mark Andrews was still only on the field for 45% of snaps, which is up about 10% from his rookie season. But the Walrus is too important to the team. He's the clear number two target on that roster. And I don't think that the Ravens get to play Miami every week. Mm, so let me, I'll, I'll check it. The, this is – like I, I think Waller is just – he is a safer start – knowing that you're not going to get two points out of your tight end. I think that 
That's exactly like the probability of Darren Waller getting two points versus Mark Andrews a few times this year. Like that's that's the only reason why I go with Waller. All right, voicemail question. Hey, ballers, this is Randy from Virginia. I just had a quick trade question: Is T. Y. Hilton and uh, and Dalvin Cook too much to give up for Saquon Barkley? All right, thank you so much. I don't think it's too much to give wow. up for Saquon Barkley. No, I think it's too much if you're going to completely destroy your wide receiver core, but you probably aren't because of where you drafted Hilton. So I think it's a good opportunity. Look, I love Hilton this year. I told you this yesterday, two touchdowns. If I can cash in on Hilton and Cook to get Saquon Barkley, I would do it. I would yes. make this trade too, 100%. All right, next question comes from Instagram from Breezy1993. Is David Montgomery a weekly starter, or should we now wait for the workload to pick up before plugging him in? You, I'm not playing him this week. Yep, that's your answer. I, I'm not dropping him. No. But I'm going to bench him and hope that his workload picks up in the next two weeks. I am probably f not quite there. I, I, I would play him this week. It depends on your choices, right? I mean, you can play him or Ronald Jones this week. Mm. I, paid, I, I think I'm going to take my shot on David Montgomery and what I saw in the preseason, what I saw in the field last week. Okay, would you play David Montgomery or would you play Shady McCoy? Uh, Shady. That's really close. I I think I'm on the Montgomery side. Okay. Adrian Peterson or David Montgomery in week two? Yeah, I think Peterson. Peterson has Dallas. I'll take the known touches. Okay. All right. But it, look, it's, it's rough. All right, here's another voicemail. Hey, guys, this is Mike from Santa Monica. I love the show. What week of the season do you start freaking out about your players not performing? <laughs> uh, never. You lie. You lie, Jason. I think his question is, when should you freak out? And that the answer is never. You shouldn't, because when you freak out, you make tilt decisions. I'm not saying that I've never freaked out. I'm saying I shouldn't have ever freaked out. Okay, well, let's rephrase the question. Let's change then. Let's, it to react. Yes. When when should you react? You should to, always react. To a star player uh, putting up duds. I mean, you have to react right off the bat. That That's why I said never is because week one is when you should start reacting uh, now, but just not overreacting. You you know, people say don't overreact to one week of football, and that's good advice, but sometimes people then just ignore it, and they, they don't pay attention to what happened week one because they like, oh, it's one week, just, you know, don't worry about anything, you know. Dante Pettis, I dropped for someone else. Now he's going to get more play than he did this week. Uh, the, the you know Shanahan came out and said it wasn't a plan to only give him two snaps. I should have got him on the field more. I'll make sure he's out there more next week. But I'm not going to sit there and wait too long just because I drafted a guy in belief that he was something that he's not. All right, uh, from Twitter, in a standard league, this is from Alan DiMartini. In a standard league, do you try to sell high on the Lizard King? Would you trade Watkins straight up in a standard league from Mike Evans? Wow. Yeah. I would do that. Did you say yeah? Yeah, of okay. course. Yeah. Yes, I would definitely do that. I, I, I'm going to say yes, but that's a, it's, it's, a fascinating, it's a fascinating question. Like the, because like just the, the the new involvement of of Chris Godwin and this is I'm not gonna overreact to Mike Evans putting up a dud he was we you go by Mike Evans if you can it, and Evans has has the staying power that Sammy Watkins does not so I will trade for Mike Evans okay uh, let's go ahead and uh, where's our Thursday night preview button Brooke oh there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. Well, this is in a different spot than it usually is. Oh, no. So I, I'm not going to re... I, you know, you talk about freaking out. If my buttons aren't in the right spot, watch oh. out. Mm. Borland, you're up. Um, <laughs> Tag no, in. No, he's not because Brooks spent forever building this uh, soundboard again last night after it crashed, so... That's how I repaid him. Yeah. Putting him on blast publicly to hundreds of thousands of people. 
All right, the Buccaneers take on the Carolina Panthers. Both teams 0-1. Uh, the over-under in this game is 50 points. I'll take the under. The Panthers are 6.5-point favorites. That gives them an implied point total of 28 points. The Buccaneers at 21. Let's start at the quarterback position. Jameis Winston drew the ire of everyone in week one. Cam Newton, we talked about him earlier today. You know, at this point, you nobody's starting Jameis Winston in this ball game. No, you are not playing him, but he is a maddening player. So him coming out going 250 and three touchdowns would not be shocking at all. But I'm not playing him. Yeah, it's the same situation as Mitch Trubisky. It might be the same situation as Jared Goff, where there's volatility in the in these performances. You know, Mitch Trubisky last year, after being put on blast by Jason, had six touchdowns the next week. It did not make him a great quarterback. Yeah, but it, it made me feel bad. It made you feel <laughs> real bad. I mean, that was so yes. stupid. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. But, I mean, Trubisky is not a good quarterback. And I was right. He was and that I, week. He sure was. He made me look real, real stupid. You know but, who he played? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who Cam Newton is playing. Are you are you uh, bandaging up your week one wounds and throwing Cam Newton right back out there? Uh, just I have, depends on the options I have. Would you start him or Dak Prescott this week? If you just pick Prescott up off the waiver wire, I'd be starting Dak. I would be starting Dak. I would be starting Dak. I've got Cam in a couple places. I looked – for to to the waivers for Dak and for Tom Brady, and they were not available. I would start those two guys over Cam, but you know, in a normal situation where you don't have um, better, you know, top options on waivers, I think Cam is a fine start. All right, the running back position. We know we're starting Christian McCaffrey. He has a goal of a thousand, a thousand. I think he gets it this year. He could. Peyton Barber, Ronald Jones, and Dare. We talked about them earlier. If I had if I had to start one of them, it would be Ronald Jones. I hope I don't have to. I fortunately in my leagues I don't. But you know, if you're out there and you have to start one of those three players, who are you starting, guys? Man, I uh, you know I said it earlier. It would be Dare, then Ronald Jones, then Peyton Barber, the starter. I I just don't want to touch this situation. Yeah, I, I think I side with Jason. Where you would go with Dari? Yeah. Last last week, Jones was 13 for 75 on the ground. Uh, Dari was on the field for 18 pass routes. Barber 12, Jones 4. And to Jones' credit, like his I runs mean, looked good. No, yeah. they look great. It, and I think he gets first and second down the majority of the time in this game, and Dari will get third down. And, you know, fantasy-wise, in a standard league, you might want one. In a PPR, you might want the other. Right. So you might want none. Yes. Exactly. And yes. wide receiver, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, you know, and company, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel. You know, Moore and Samuel were on the field. They received kind of the same treatment that Evans and Godwin received in week one, which was underwhelming quarterback play, inconsistency. DJ Moore did receive 10 targets. Uh, DJ Samuel, or <laughs> let's combine them. Can mm. we do that? Yeah. Curtis Samuel, four targets. They both ran the same amount of routes. So I want, like, I want to ask the question for Curtis Samuel. He was a, a draft season breakout player. This is week one. We're not overreacting, but you have to react. He only received four targets, and he and Cam was not throwing the ball deep. And meanwhile, Greg Olson was back, and Olson got nine targets. DJ Moore at ten targets. And you know that Christian McCaffrey is going to get his. Is there enough in – Cam Newton's vertical game that you're you're still okay with Curtis Samuel. Well, that's the issue here with if you're not if you're out, like if you're listening you're like, "Man, I just don't trust Cam. He didn't look good. I'm worried about the foot and the deep ball." Then obviously you need to be out on Curtis Samuel. But if you're in on Cam and See, you think this is fine, I don't agree with that take. You you think that if Cuz I I think it's built on the wrong principle it, it, we are projecting Curtis Samuel to be more involved in downfield passing that was kind of the hope but that's not his history he, he was very productive and he's a 10 yard per catch guy so I think he can still be heavily involved on a week-to-week -week basis and I'm not making any judgments on which guy I prefer this week Greg Olson might be off the field he might not even play or be very limited because he's banged up he hopes to play but he even said the short week is not good for this injury that was his quote 
So that that definitely changes the equation. If, yeah, if I mean, Olson's not e- out there. even if he's not, I I still believe in Curtis Samuel being somebody that's going to be valuable. And then you know, in week one, it was just ugly all around on the offense. Yeah, the one thing that was nice was DJ Moore's air yards. It looked like he, you know, he was still ahead of Curtis Samuel in drafts. He still projects to be the one for the team. Right now, DJ Moore is wide receiver 19, consensus rank on the week. Curtis Samuel's wide receiver 31. So, uh, you know, if you want to sit Curtis Samuel. Yeah, I, I'm that's personally fine. That's sitting fine. him. Wait and see. See what happens in week two. You know, could bounce back and forth. I don't think DJ Moore is, you know, done enough to – be the every week number one target. I think it's just going to be something based on the, what the defense gives and, Cam Newton. And, you know, we need to be realistic that even though I'm saying I would personally start Cam, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of risk to this game. You had two quarterbacks that looked terrible week one. Now on a short week, early season short week matchups, those Thursday night football games oftentimes are bad for the offense. Andy, you said you'd bet the under here. I did, but uh, so, I mean Vegas obviously thinks it'll be a fifty point game. So that's the the tough part of it is these defenses and what you expect. Vegas doesn't look at it like it's gonna be a you know, a crawl fest like Chicago Green Bay was. Sure, yeah. I mean, but the point is is this could go south. So if you want to sit DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel wait a week, that's fine. We actually cut Curtis Samuel for TJ Hawkinson in uh the NFL League One where we are dominating. Yeah, take that. Mm. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, are you starting both this week? Yes. All right, we have them at wide receiver 10 and 17 on the consensus rankings. We've talked about a lot of these players already. O.J. Howard, uh, yep. Cameron Brate snaps in week one. I mean, 80% snap count for O.J. Howard. One of the reasons I expect to bounce back from him. Greg Olson dealing with the injury. Right now, you don't need to really roster him, I don't think. Cameron Brate? No. No. Greg Olson I'm talking about. Oh. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had a lot of – I mean, especially right now with the back injury. This is a Thursday night game. I can't imagine you want to play him. So, if you have Greg Olson, are you pivoting? I if mean, I have Greg Olson, I'm absolutely pivoting. Yeah. I think there are other options. Greg Olson there. or Vernon Davis. In that case, because of the target share, I'll go Olson if he's on the field. Yeah, if he's, if he's active, sure. Cam Newton – Greg Olson, they have a connection. They do. And I, I think that the Buccaneers' defense looked better in week one than what we saw last year. And uh, by by a long shot, you had the, the defensive score by San Francisco that distorted the you know the final outcome. You didn't have any production at all from, you know, really the – Garoppolo didn't do anything fantasy-wise. The running backs combined didn't do very much. It was a good week for the Buccaneers' defense in week one. Last year they were atrocious, but they they've made improvements. I think we saw them in week one. So that was such a weird game. Have you guys ever remembered five touchdowns being called back in a half before? Uh, no, that was, it was just so weird. That should have been a high scoring game, and instead was not because of penalties. Cam Newton is nine and two in his last eleven games against Tampa Bay. So that'll wrap up the breakdown on Thursday night. Want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Uh, an Amari Cooper signed jersey yesterday, $60.84. So you can check them out. And uh, that'll do it for us. We'll be back tomorrow, starts of the week. Week two matchups continue. Likely more news, hopefully football oh, related. Always more news. Enjoy your day, Foot Clan. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Oh, Foot Clan, do you got a case of the post podcast munchies? I do already. Well, White Castle sliders from the grocery store, the perfect uh, little treat for conquering those cravings. I'm on it. They're made with 100% beef patties on a bed of steamed grilled onions. It takes only a few minutes to make your very own mouth-watering, one-of-a-kind tasting White Castle sliders. Get the Crave Conquering going. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get $1 off your purchase of any four- or six-pack White Castle sliders.